Divine Mother would very often quote the saying to us, die while you're alive and be absolutely dead, then all that you do will be good. But we can ask ourselves, how can we be dead and alive at the same time? But perhaps if we translate dead to mean still and present, selfless and desireless, and alive to mean actively present, actively aware, actively alert, then we have a possibility to understand what that state is that lies beyond existence. There was a man who every day practiced yoga, the union, to bring the levels of life together. But one day, as he was practicing his pranayama, his breathing, his breath ceased. So his wife came in to find him in this state without breath and immediately called the physician. The physician pronounced him dead. So they called the priest and they called the mourners and the wife and the mourners wailed and wept as they placed him in his coffin and carried him off to the burial ground. But as the pallbearers were carrying the coffin and shook it up, they shook him out of his state. And he lifted the lid of his coffin. He said, I'm not dead, I'm not dead. And so they put the coffin down and the physician came over and the priest came over and then they went into a little huddle with all of the mourners and the wife and decided that he was dead. So they pushed him down in his coffin, closed the lid and went off and buried him. <laughs> and then Mullah Nasruddin died. They put him, in, put him in his coffin and all the poor bears were carrying him off to the cemetery ground when they came to a crossroads. And all the poor bears couldn't remember which way the cemetery was. So Molinus Rudin, hearing this kerfuffle, opened the lid of his coffin, sat up and said, Oh, you stupid lot, you know that the cemetery is that way. <laughs> so they all turned in that direction. And so he lay down, closed the lid, and they carried him off to be buried. So now there's a little puzzler for us, which may seem as though it's unrelated. But let's see where it leads us. There was uh, two brothers, there were two brothers, a very rich man and a very poor man. The rich man was very mean and the poor man was very kind. But one day, Elijah the prophet disguised as a hermit, a beggar, came to the door of the rich man asking for arms. And the rich man said, get away, we don't have beggars here. And so Elijah was sent away. So Elijah came to the door of the poor brother who opened the door <coughs> and invited him in and shared with him the meager fare that he fed his family. So after enjoying this repast, Elijah said to the poor brother, 
I can grant you one boon. Tell me what it is that you want. And the poor man said, I would like to have enough just to feed my family, to give a little alms now and then. So Elijah said, Open your purse. And then he said, When there is sufficient, just say, Enough, enough, enough. So after Elijah took his leave, the poor man opened his purse and there was a gold coin inside. He took it out, placed it on the table, closed the purse and then he opened it again and there was another gold coin. He closed and opened his purse again and again until his table was covered with gold coins and he could see that there was sufficient there to feed his family and take care of them for their lifetime to come. And so he said, enough enough, enough. And when he opened the purse, there was no more gold coin inside. His rich brother came to visit him and saw him living now with plenty, his family well taken care of, and asked him, what had changed his fortunes? And the poor brother explained to him what had happened, that the beggar had come to his door and given him a boon. Oh, said the rich brother, he came to my door and I chased him away. But the rich man went off and feeling great regret, went off to seek Elijah. And when he was in the marketplace, sure enough, he saw Elijah disguised as the old beggar and went up to him and said, I'm so sorry, I don't know what came over me that day. I'm usually very kind. Please come to my house and let me entertain you. So Elijah went to the house and received the great hospitality of the rich brother. And afterwards, Elijah offered him the boon and he asked for wealth. So Elijah said, open your purse. So the brother, after Elijah had left, opened his purse again and again and again. But enough was never enough. The table overflowed, the floor overflowed with gold coins. Gold coins went up to the window ledges and still they opened the purse and closed it again and opened it again. The next day the poor man came to Brizard, his brother, and found both he and his wife dead and buried in the gold that reached their ceiling. The question that can be asked and is asked, what is the deep meaning of enough, enough, enough? How many times have we said that in our life? To make a completion, 
to end a phase, a relationship, pain. What's the deep meaning of enough, enough, enough? What does it mean for you in the light of your experiences of life? And how does it fit into the possibility of answering this inquiry or understanding that which lies beyond existence, to be dead while we're still alive? Enough, enough, enough. and you get a perspective of, I went to Sydney and I thought, thank God I got out of this town. I really like